everyone. Myself, Prayag Patel, working as assistant professor in ITICD department of LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. Now, in today's video lecture, I will discuss about the next topic of the graph theory as a depth first search and breadth first search. So, we already know the basic technique of the DFS and BFS. Now, how we can apply this technique for the root entry? So, first is a depth first search. Now, in depth first search, let G equal to VE be a loop free connected undirected graph with R belongs to V. Starting from R, we construct a path in G that is as long as possible. If this path includes the every vertex in V, then the path is a spanning tree T for the graph G and we finish this process. So basically we visit the node in depth wise. So we visit the node in particular scenario or in particular depth only. If not let X and Y be the last two vertices. That means if this path is not possible, if the on the only one way is not possible for finding the tree, then what we have to do? So here another case is like this. If not, that means if first case is not possible, then let X and Y be the last two vertices visited along this path. So in previous path, we find or visit the last two vertices as a X and Y with Y at the last vertex. So that means X is a parent and Y is a child and Y is a leaf node. Then we then return or backtrack to the vertex X and construct a second path in G that is as long as possible start at X and doesn't include the any vertex already visited. So X is a parent, Y is a last node, Y is a child node. So visit the node Y then we visit the node X. So backtrack from Y to X and we find the another path from X to any unvisited node. So if we already visit the one node, then no include this node as a second time visited. So this is a scenario for the depth first search. Now here, if no such path exists, backtrack to the parent P of X. So from the X, no any another path is possible because X is a parent, Y is a child, we already visit X to Y, then after. If X to another path is not possible, then backtrack on the previous node. So backtrack on the parent of X, so backtrack of the X to P and see how far it is possible to branch off from P, building a path to a new vertex Y1. So your new path is considered as a Y1 from P to Y1. Now, should all edges from the vertex P lead to the vertices already encountered? Backtrack one level higher and continue this process. So if all the node of the P, all the child of the P is already visited, then backtrack on the previous node or parent node of the P. Since the graph is finite and connected, this technique which is called the backtracking or depth first search. So basically we can say that in depth first search, G equal to VE be a loop free connected undirected graph where V mode V equal to N. That means total number of vertices equal to N and the vertices are ordered as V1, V2, V3 up to Vn. So in rooted tree, if we want to find the depth for search sequence, then one order is already given. So here order is like V1, V2, V3 up to Vn. It is a sequence for arriving the doors. So here we remember this order for solving the example. So basically in depth first search, we visit the root node, then visit the any one child, then depth wise we have to perform the operation until we will get the visit all the node are considered as a visited node. Now understand algorithm of the depth first search. Now step number one, assign V1 to the variable V and initialize T as the tree consisting of just this one vertex. That means initially we consider the first node as a V1 as I have root node because our sequence is like V1, V2, V3 up to Vn. So in this sequence, first node is become a root node. So you have consider V1 as a V, initial value of V equal to V1. Now after that, visit that node V1. So see here in first step, last point is visit V1. Okay. Now after that, step number two, 
here in step number 1 we visit the v1 and construct the tree in tree we have only one node as a node v1 and v1 consider as a root node for our tree now in step number 2 select the smallest subscript i for two less or equal to i less or equal to n such that v v1 belongs to e that means v2 v1 is a one edge and vi has no already been visited if no such subscript is found then go to step 3 otherwise perform the following operations so here basically in step number 2 condition is 2 less or equal to i less or equal to n so here v2 v1 is a one edge so v1 is your next node now vi has not already been visited that means your next node as a v2 v3 v4 v5 all node are considered as a vi okay in vi if vi is not already visited then visit that particular node so here consider the perform the operation according to following three case if this type of node is not possible that means v1 is your leaf node then no need to perform the any operation directly go to the step number 3 but here in our case if the child of the v1 is possible then perform the first step as a attach the edge v v1 to the tree because in tree we already add the only one node as a v1 so next consider the node v2 v1 is another node so here consider the next edge as a v2 v1 in our tree and visit the vi so here next is assign vi to v and perform the third operation as a return to step 2 that means first we consider the first node as a v1 then visit the next node as a vi so v2 vi is add one edge from v2 vi then assign vi to v that means for next time your node is v node consider as a vi not as a v2 not as a v1 so vi that means your particular sequence then return to the step number 2 now step number 3 here we write the go to step number 3 if no such subscript is found so no any child node is available then go to the step number 3 if v equal to v1 the tree t is the rooted order spawning tree for the order specified that means root node is only one node is available then we have to terminate this process in step number 3 now step number 4 for v not equal to v1 that means your node is not same as the your parent node so v not equal to v1 backtrack from v to its parents u in the tree t then assign u to v and return to step number 2 so return to step number 2 and perform the all the operation so visit your next child next child like this so this is a simple algorithm for the depth first search now understand this algorithm using this example so here apply the dfs algorithm for the graph g equal to ve shown in this figure now here given order is like alphabetical order like a b c d e f g h i and j so this is a given order so you have to visit the node according to this order now in this order first node is a node a that means node a become a root node for your tree and visit the node a then after what we have to do we here consider a as a root node and visit the a then after according to step number 2 we find that the vertex b is the first vertex w such that a w belongs to e and w has no been visited earlier so we attach the edge a to w as a a to b to t and visit the node b assign b to v and then return to step number 2 so this is a process for the step number 2 that means here we consider the child of the node a so in this graph connected node with the node a as a c d and b but out of this three c d and b which node is considered as a first because in our sequence we give the sequences like a b c d e f g h i and j so in this sequence after a your first node is node b and here our child node is b c and d so out of the b c and d which one is a first b so we first visit the node b now after that for after visiting the node b we consider the next step as a repeat the step number 2 so according to step number 2 b node is consider your root node and find the sub child or sub tree for the node b 
So for, from the B, any path is possible because in depth for search we move up to the depth. So A to B is already visited. Then B to any path is possible. So here B to D and B to E, two possible path is available. Now from the D and E, which one is the first in our sequence? So D is a first. So first we visit the D. Now after visiting the node D, what is the next step? So D to any path is possible. Yes, D to A is possible, but A is already visited node. So no need to perform the operation from D to A. So dead end at the node D and backtrack on your the previous node as a node B. Then find the another path from B to any node. So B to any other unvisited node is available. Yes, B to E is available. So visit the B to E. Then after E to two path is possible. E to H and E to F. Then out of the H and F, which one is visited first? First we visit the F because in a sequence, in a given sequence. F is first, then G, then H like this. So first we visit the F, then no any path possible from F. So backtrack on E, then visit the node H. Okay, after that, after visiting the node H, no any path is possible from H to your previous node. So we backtrack on the previous node, so H to E. Now E to any uh, unvisited node is available? No. Then backtrack to B. So B to any unvisited node is available? No. Then backtrack on A. Now after that, after visiting the node A, we have to perform the another path, another way is like this. So A to any unvisited node is available. So see here A to C path is available. So we visit the A to C. Now after the C, consider the C as a root node, then execute next step as a C to any path is possible. Yes, C to G is possible. So see here. We visit the C to G. Then C to G, after the G, we have a two option, I and G. Now out of this I and J, which one is first? I is first in our given sequence. So first we visit the I, then we visit the J. So here we can say that for this graph, our sequence is like this, is first in first tree. We see that this is a, your final tree for the depth first search. So A is a root node, then B, then D, then E, F, H, C, G, I, and J. Okay. Now after that, if the given figure is same, but some order is different. So if the given order is like J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, and A, then what is the result entry? So in this case, first we consider the node J. So J become a root node. Now after J, J to any path is possible? Yes, J to G. Now G to any path is possible? Yes, G to I and C. Now from I and C, which one is the first? I is first because order is like reverse order. J, I, H, G, F, E, P, C, B, A. Okay. So here visit the node I, then visit the C. Now C to A is possible. So C to A, then A to D, then D to B, then B to E, then E to H and F both are possible. So first we visit the H, then we visit the F. So this figure C is considered the resultant of the DFS sequence or DFS tree. If our order is like J, I, H as a reverse order. Okay. So this is a DFS sequence. Now after that, Next algorithm is a breadth first search. In BFS, we can say as a second method for searching the vertices of a loop free connected undirected graph is considered as a breadth first search. Now in breadth first search, here we design a one vertex or we design a one tree. In this tree, first vertex is considered as a root node and fan out to all the vertices adjacent to root node. So first we visit the root node, then consider the all the neighbors of the root node. Means we can say that in breadth first search, we visit the node by level by level. From each child of the root, we then fan out to those vertices not previously visited that are adjacent to one of these children. As we continue this process, we never list a vertex twice. So no cycle is constructed and with G finite, the process terminate when we can find the all the node is visited then stop the process a queue is used for the breadth first search in depth first search we use the stack now in breadth first search we use the queue so queue is follow the order is like first in first out now for the breadth first search understand the let g equal to ve 
be a loop free connected undirected graph where mode v equal to n and the vertices are ordered in v1 v2 up to vn so in dfs and bfs in both the case we require the one order because here this is a not a binary tree this is a rootted tree for the rooted tree we have to require the sum order for sorting this in form of bfs or dfs now next understand the algorithm for the breadth first search step number 1 in this algorithm is insert vertex v1 at the rear of the qq and initialize the t as the tree made up of this one vertex only v1 as a root node okay and visit the node v1 that means first we consider the first element of the sequence as your first node and visit that node put this node v1 in a q in first position because initially q is empty q and in tree also we have to represent the first node as a root node v1 now after that step number 2 in step number 2 while the qq is not empty we have to repeat this process until we get the empty q okay so we can say that the while the qq is not empty delete the vertex v from the front of the q so in q one element is available as a v1 so remove the v1 remove the v from the your q now examine the vertex vi that are adjacent to v is the specified order so we have already order is like v1 v2 v3 up to vn so from this order find the first occurrence neighbor node so adjacent of the v is find and first adjacent is put in a q so if vi has not been visited perform the following so vi is a child of the your node v so vi is not visited then perform the first thing is insert vi at the rear of the q so in q we have a two component front and rear so from the front we remove the element and at the rear we add the element so insert the vi at the rear of the q then second thing is attach the edge v to vi in the tree t and third thing is visit the vertex vi so here we perform this three operation for the each and every node so this is a simple algorithm for the breadth first search now after that apply the breadth first algorithm for this example so see here first given figure a is a given figure g equal to v now for that we have to consider the sequence as a a b c d e f g h i and j then find the breadth first search tree from this graph now here start at the vertex a because in our sequence first node is a node a so node a become a root node now after that draw the tree in tree only one node is available as a root node a then after visit the vertex a we insert this node a into our queue now second step we now delete the from one element from the queue so here first element a is inserted in a queue so delete the a from the q and add the child of the one means a into the our q so b c and d is considered as a child of the node a in first figure so here b c is added b c and d is added in our q so see here first we remove the node a from the q then we add the first child as a b now b c and d this three is considered as a child node of the a connected node of the a now which node is inserted first for that first you follow this order so in order first node is b then c then d so you have to follow this order so first we insert the b then we insert the c then we insert the d now after removing the a we insert the b c and d then after next node b become a root node or your current node and execute this node means remove the node b from the tree and insert the child of the b in the queue so this process can be repeated and we can find the tree is like this so here in second figure c a is a root node b c and d as a three child of the node a then after we visit the node b so remove the node b from the queue and insert the child of the b so only one child is available unvisited child of the b is only e so insert e in a queue then remove the next child as a your node c so remove the c and insert the g in a queue then after remove the e and insert the f and g in a graph then remove the g and insert the i and j in our tree 
so this is a simple way for solving the example of the breadth first sir so basically we visit the node by level by level so our sequence of this tree is like a b c d then e then g then f h i and j so this is a example of the breadth first search now if our sequence or order is like j i h g f e d c b and a then what is the resultant tree so your second figure b is resultant tree for the sequence j i h like this so here first we visit the node j then from the j any path is possible yes so j to g is possible so visit the g then after g to any path is possible yes g to i and g to c both possible so in this case first we consider the i because in our order first is i then c so first visit i then i to no any path is possible then c then c to a then a to d b then b to e then e to h then e e to f so this is a resultant tree for the order j i h up to the e now after that if the given data is not a tree but given data in form of one matrix so see the example like this let g equal to ve be a undirected graph with loops where the vertices are order as v1 v2 v3 up to v7 so here in this graph or in this table we see that v1 to v7 is as a seven vertices and in figure a is the adjacent matrix ag of the graph g how can we use this representation of g to determine whether g is connected without drawing the graph so here we can see that in from this graph we have to draw the tree for bfs as well as dfs and find the connected node from this graph so for this first we define first thing is main diagonal is considered as a ignorable because here in main diagonal if any value is 1 that means this self loop is possible for this node because here v v2 to v2 is path available that means self loop then v3 to v3 then self loop like this now after that we have to draw the breadth first search tree is like this because here consider the sequence is like v1 v2 v3 up to v7 so first we visit the node v1 then from the v1 any node is possible or any connection is possible see in this matrix in this matrix v1 to v2 and v1 to v7 both value is 1 that means v1 to v2 and v1 to v7 path is possible so according to this we have to visit this node and find the tree as a like this v1 then child is a v2 v7 then v2 child is v3 then v4 v5 and v6 same way we can find the tree for the depth first search from this graph like this so first visit the v1 because v1 is a first node in a sequence then after visit the next node as a v2 then v3 then v4 then v5 then v6 then v7 so this is a simple example for finding the bfs or dfs sequence from the given matrix not from the given graph so actually matrix is a second way or representation of graph in form of adjacent matrix so in this lecture we discuss about the what is the bfs what is the dfs and how we can find the tree from the your given graph using the bfs and dfs thank you for watching this video